We need more F10 content. There's not much Bring out back there the in F10 our world M5. to do to BMWs. Update. Any still F10 the F10? content soon? Would love to do see more F10 and M5 content. F10? Missing the update, update on, the on the F10 M5. Is it sold? No, I haven't sold the F10 M5. She is right here. After owning this M5 for a little bit over two years, probably the last time you guys will see this car on the channel. I'm finally getting rid of it. You what? You better not be lying, bitch. I really don't want to do it. But I have to. The truth is that the F10 M5 quickly became one of my dream cars. I first got to experience one courtesy of Matt from Obsessed Garage. I got to review his OG spec one that eventually he gave away. Five minutes is all it took with that car to fall in love with the platform. Oh my god. That is some serious freaking torque right there. The F10 M5 just checked all the boxes for me. The power, the sound, the practicality, and believe it or not, the reliability. I absolutely love this car. I did notice that there weren't a ton of social media creators making content on the F10, and I knew I could be the person to help fill that void. And that's exactly what I did. I picked up a 2015 BMW M5 in frozen black with the competition package. I flew over to Georgia with Ali to go look at it. It was like love at first sight. It was the perfect spec. The sticker price was something outrageous. I remember driving it back to Florida and all I can think of is, man, this is a big boy's car. <laughs> Felt like a dream. A lot of my viewers are super excited that I was showing the F10 platform some love. We started off with some dine-in adjustable lowering springs first, did some spacers, upgraded the intake system to RK titanium front mount ones, CSF charge coolers. The engine bay was like a work of art. Combine that with the finish of frozen black, which by the way, I don't think more than 200 of them were built in that specific color. Can't even put words to it. it was Made a few videos on it and then I wrecked it. It was totaled $37,000 in damages and there was just no way I was gonna fix that car. I feel like my whole life went upside down. I know, I know, I know. Most people would just say, well, it's just a car. You survived unharmed, which I did. Great car, very safe because with that type of damage on the driver's side, it could have been worse. But as a car enthusiast, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. You get to a point where you can afford a certain car, mod it a certain way, the car is everything that you want it to be, and then it's gone. I didn't want to give up on the platform. I feel like up to that point, I've built such a loyal audience for people that have been thirsting, craving for F10 and 5 content that I couldn't let those guys down and I honestly wanted to finish the build, even if it meant with another car that's not the frozen black one. For several months after the accident, I was very patient looking for one that checked all the boxes for me. And with enough patience, I came across a more special F10 M5. More rare than the frozen black one that I had. I traveled to Rhode Island when a BMW Warwick and they had a pure metal silver edition. One of 50 in the United States, one of 75 in the world. It was a very special car. So the F10 M5 made it to Orlando ready to put all the mods that I had on the frozen black one onto the pure metal one and continue upgrading the car with the other mods that I originally had for the frozen black M5, but obviously I didn't get to it. But there's one thing, I felt really bad modding the pure metal silver edition M5. And a lot of you guys gave me a lot of hate for doing so because it's such a special car that was already perfect from factory. But I couldn't feel bad modding the car because at the end of the day, I'm a content creator. What am I gonna make videos about, right? I'm just gonna review it 20 times. No, I had to modify the car. But I was gonna modify it in a tasteful way that wasn't crazy outside of the box and very easy to reverse back to a stock form. You know, my favorite go-to option for most of my cars, OEM Plus. Just a few mods, make it look a little bit more aggressive and I'd be happy and I'd finish the build. I started things off by installing a full FI setup, which I didn't get to install on a frozen black M5. It was a dream. The fitment was great, it looked amazing, and it woke up the car big time. It was one of the most beautiful exhaust notes I've ever heard in person. The turbo whistle and high pitch sound combo was orgasmic. I then installed the same Dynan adjustable lowering springs, the same CSF charge coolers, but this time around I decided to change the color to match the carbon ceramic brakes, which looked absolutely amazing. The RK titanium intakes and the charge pipes were also transferred over to this M5. The combination, well, I mean, just look at it. 
Instead of doing spacers, I upgraded to proper fitting aftermarket wheels. Vossen HF5 finished in gloss black. They fit the car perfectly. The door handle trims and fender vents were blacked out. We installed a 3D design front lip and rear diffuser and performance carbon fiber mirror caps and the cherry on top. Expel ceramic 5% tint all the way around. The exterior was perfect, but something was missing and that was more power. We loaded up a stage two boot mod three tune and the car was an absolute monster. Took it to the dyno and the car made ridiculous power. I was in love. It was the perfect car. And now she is stock. <sighs> Technically the way she's supposed to be for such a special and rare car. I'm not sure how many times I've said it in the video already, but it hurts. Oh, it hurts, man. I'm having a very hard time making this damn video. But at the end of the day, guys, I run a business. And from your end of the screen, it might seem like it's just fun and games, us making YouTube videos, modding the cars, and having one hell of a time. Guys, it's really tough. Running a YouTube channel, running a parts website is a lot of work, and it requires a good amount of strategy. From a business perspective, it just doesn't make any sense. And it's taken me a very, very long time to accept that, which is why I still have the car. I was supposed to sell the car late last year, but I couldn't let go of her. Just couldn't do it. I was trying to justify why I should keep her. It's a super niche market. Very hard to monetize with this car. For those that own F10 M5s, a lot of you guys don't modify them because I mean, the car is perfect from factory. It's not much you need to do to it. But for those that want to modify them, you'll quickly realize that you have to pay the M5 tax for quality parts, which are very, very expensive. And then you need somebody that knows how to work on them. The S63 engine is not the easiest engine to work on, especially yourself unless you have a lot of knowledge or the right, you know, diagnostics tools, computer software, stuff like that. And I really did try pretty hard to make consistent content on this car. Installed, get a lot of mods, try to market it. Hopefully F10 and 5 owners would go to the website and buy some parts, but it was very hard. It's a very small pool of audience to begin with. And then just a fraction of those even modify their cars. And then a fraction of those are willing to buy quality parts for the car and not just like eBay or Alibaba China stuff. So that's one reason, right? If you guys don't know how the business structure works for my channel, views, ad revenue, engagement doesn't really pay as much. That's just a small amount that probably pays for my employees and that's about it. Selling parts is where, that's what I need to continue doing what I do. And I wanna thank you guys that have purchased from the website and help support us. It really does mean a ton to me. And it's what allows us to do all this stuff so we can give back to you guys with information, reviews, testing things out before you guys get to test it out and spending your own money. So I appreciate that. Like, if you guys want to support the channel and you have a BMW and you're looking for parts, just give our website a shot. It means a lot. Unlike a lot of the bigger stores, customer service is number one for us. We reply on weekends, nights, 9 o'clock, 10 p.m. And we're always available and we have a lot of hands-on experience with a lot of the parts that we install and uh, promote on our videos. Support, I think, is our biggest thing. We're a small market. We don't stock everything. We do stock a good amount of stuff. We drop ship other stuff. but Because, of course, we're scaling and we're growing. And uh, scaling and growing means I have to get rid of this car and get another car that appeals to more people and has a bigger market share. And besides the monetization portion of owning this car, where you know it doesn't really make me a ton of money by having it, and it occupies space, it's a special car, limited edition. Again, one of five, pure middle silver edition. Just wasn't giving it enough time. They didn't have enough time to enjoy it. And on top of that, they didn't want to go like balls to the wall because it's such a special car. That's why I went pretty light on mods. I think if I were ever to buy another F10 M5 in the future, it probably wouldn't be a super special edition like this. It'll be another one. And then I'll go him. That's for sure. And then there's the obvious reason, which is content creators have to switch things up and keep things fresh. You know, viewers get bored over time, they lose interest and you have to keep changing it up. Just think of like your favorite car content creator. They're always buying new cars, modifying new cars, doing new things to keep things fresh. You always have to change things up as a content creator to be relevant. And I've had a very, very hard time doing that because I buy a car thinking I'm gonna modify it, make some content and then get rid of it, move on to the next one, but then I get attached. And it's happened with every single car that I've ever owned. And that's why it's super hard for me to get rid of this car. But I don't have the space to keep all the cars. I don't have Adam LZ money to keep all the cars. So I have to make hard decisions. There's probably only two cars that I would never get rid of. The rest of them, they're, I'm gonna get rid of them. 
that's just the nature of it, you know? So even in a stock setup with the Kropovich titanium exhaust, it still sounds pretty damn loud and very aggressive. Let me show you guys. No call start! turbos though me like it. yes action oh is this like the last official drive uh, maybe I think it is. Stock form has a daily driver, probably the best way to, to drive it. It has more than enough power, 600 horsepower. Once you put it into uh, like all the Sport Plus settings uh, for the engine, the suspension, and the steering wheel, it is very saucy, very saucy. And probably too much power for most people to handle. Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. I'm in 100 kilometers per hour. <laughs> 45 uh, with a little bit of traction loss. Yeah. Uh, and Pirellis, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the Pirellis are just, I'm sorry. If you guys rock Pirellis, them ass. They're not the best tire. Even the people rap about it, they're not. <laughs> just all the rappers back in the day growing up is all. Oh, rap Pirellis, Pirellis. 22s. <laughs> rap them Pirellis. Early 740 the... fizz out. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna trigger some people, bro. You're gonna trigger some people. Yeah, I don't I don't care. I, I know I worked on those cars. Oh my god! <laughs> of course I had to let off. <laughs> I almost hit the dash with the camera. Well, as you guys can see, uh, the car is very saucy. Yes it is. With traction fully off. So if you're gonna own one of these cars. Stick to MDM mode. It went that time. Uh, that's because I short shifted. Yeah, well, I felt that. I short shifted. That's the reason I did it. Kind of like the F80. When you bring it up to red line and then you shift, it does the unpredictable stuff. The salami swami. I want to try the first gear pull again, though. It's going to be like. Da, 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 da. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this car literally whiplashes you around. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but uh, I think I think it will be different results if you had like R triple eights on the car. That R triple eights are just even upgraded to 305 Michelin PS4 tires or something like that. This car does not stay straight at lower gears, high RPM. But as you guys can see, it's a lot of fun. But you got to be super, super responsible. MDMO now, so it's a little bit more controllable, or I should say a lot more controllable. Uh, <laughs> never mind. You're a liar. It was. You guys saw the outside shot. It was definitely controllable. You're, you're a liar. But we are also in a very small curve, I guess. Ah. No, you're just a liar. I think lying. it's my weight. Your my weight. weight is putting too much you're fucking pressure. So the car just goes this way. Okay, never mind. I give up. Yep, uh, and this guy decided to pull right in front of you. Like an idiot. <laughs> what have you learned today? Uh, F10 and F5 with Pirelli sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can't put the part down. Oh, there you go. This. Yes. 
probably one of the things that's not so much fun about owning an F10 M5. We're approaching 17 gallons. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this car chugs gasoline. Uh, Four dollars a gallon, eighty dollars and seventeen cents, nearly twenty gallons. But well, you know how they say it's not miles per gallon for this car; it's miles per gallon. So the following might sound like a joke, but I promise you guys, I'm being very genuine. The F10 M5 has been extremely reliable. That includes the pure metal silver one and the frozen black one. I've never had any issues. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw the video where I did maintenance on this car, not because I needed to, it's just because it needed nothing and I wanted to do something to it. So we did the coils and the spark plugs, which were a pain in the ass because you have to remove both the MEs to get access to everything. But I did it for preventative maintenance. Other than that, the S63 has been extremely reliable. I know these cars get a lot of bad rep, awesome seals, turbo, stuff like that. That might be the case for earlier model F10 M5s, pre-LCI 2013. I know those have more issues. I know the 2016 later production years, they had upgraded components in the engine bay. I believe the injectors are different. Even the coals are different. So this car has been very reliable, but to be fair, I mean, it only has around 41,000 miles at the moment. So not a lot of miles. And then the previous owners really took care of the car, which is I think the most important thing when you're buying a used car, especially one like this, make sure it was taken care of correctly, maintenance records and everything's good to go. Frozen black one had 50,000 miles and it was equally as good. I think the only problem the uh, frozen black one had, uh, the rear diffs start to leak, which is, I guess, one of the common issues of these cars over time with high miles, diff starts to, to leak. So you gotta address that oh yeah one thing i should mention s63 pretty known for uh burning oil earlier models burn a little bit more than the newer ones but with my experience i would have to top off this car with a quart of oil maybe every 15 to 1800 miles could be more or less depending on how you drive the car of course and it's totally normal because it's even stated in the user manual it literally it's literally in the manual telling you that you will have to top it off every so miles again depending on how you drive the car which to be honest, it's not that big of an issue, right? You top it off once and then the next time you have to top it off, you just do an oil change and that's it. Unlike a lot of the guys on Facebook groups and the forums, which just hear information about a certain car and just keep repeating it without having any kind of experience themselves. I've owned two of them. Reliability has been very, very good, especially if the car's well maintained. So here's an interesting thing. I was planning to announce in this video that I would be putting the Pure Metal Silver M5 up for sale with the main goal to find somebody that can truly appreciate it, drive it, and take really good care of it. I know it shouldn't matter who owns the car after me as long as I get paid for the car, right, and I make my money, but I do care. Well, while filming the video, I was introduced to a gentleman that wanted his car worked on. He saw the M5 and instantly wanted it. I gave him the price, he agreed to it, and it was boom, 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 and committed to buy it. It happened so fast, that it felt like a mini heart attack for me. <laughs> I figured I'd make the video, announce it, and it would slowly bother me and I'd be okay with it. And I feel like a huge part of me just died instantly because like, oh God, it's happening. But unfortunately, that's what has to be done. I guess if there's any good news to this, cheer you guys up a little bit. That means uh, if the F10 M5 is leaving, that means a replacement has to come in, you know, to freshen things up on the Vehicle Virus channel. And I haven't decided what car that is. What should be the next car that I replace the F10 M5 with? That's a tough decision. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Pretty much it. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Got, uh, got a lot of good content coming up. And as always, thanks for watching. Till next time.